Next week, Professor John Durant, with his unconventional methods of imparting scientific knowledge, teaches in a week. A barmaid, a housewife and a taxi driver. Why planes fly? Thursday night on one, and in Top of the Pops, Kylie Minogue, Soho, a nomad. At 7.30, Mark and Diane make an important date. You haven't forgotten the counselling session? Of course not. Three o'clock, on the dock. <laughs> At eight o'clock, Tomorrow's World takes to the sea on board an unsinkable lifeboat, undergoing trials off the Aberdeen coast. In the British Empire at 8.30, it's business as usual. A burst radiator pipe, don't move, I'm on my way. <laughs> at 9.45, Granville reveals a secret wish. You know what I want for my birthday? A balalaika. I'll see if I can get one in a knitted for you. <laughs> in Question Time at 10.15, Peter Sissons is joined by Edward Heath, Shadow Chancellor John Smith, Max Hastings and Sarah Parkin of the Green Party. At 11.15, our film, Don't Look Now. I've seen her, and she wants you to know that she's happy. A supernatural thriller for Thursday night on One. Tonight's film is a financial farce in which Barbara Streisand attempts to raise cash for her husband, Michael Sarazin, who's fallen prey to a New York loan shark with disastrous consequences. For Pete's sake, is at midnight. Now on One with the best of today's action on field and slope. Sports night. Good evening, a really outstanding night of FA Cup soccer. Arsenal at Leeds and fourth round replay action also from Upton Park and Hillsborough. And we're also at the Goldstone Ground Brighton along with a very apprehensive Liverpool. History is what's making them nervous. In 1983, Brighton, en route to Wembley, beat Liverpool at Anfield. A year later, they repeated the result at Brighton. Shortly after 4.30 on Saturday, Liverpool may have felt that the Brighton Cup jinx had been laid to rest. Well, they were wrong. Brighton back from two down to earn tonight's replay. We'll be at the Goldstone ground in a moment. And Arsenal may have thought they'd got past Leeds United on Sunday. The referee said no, and it's his decision that counts. Leeds may have thought they'd got past David Seaman. It's struck and cross. Oh, it's going to come out of Afghanistan! And that's the best moment of the whole afternoon. Seaman earns the replay. Highlights tonight from Elendro. Luton and West Ham also try again tonight at Kenilworth Road on Saturday. Luton's Kingsley Black was the man on target. Upton Park tonight, West Ham Stuart Slater could be the man to watch. This is what he did to Aldershot. Slater on another of those lazy runs, and a brilliant goal from Slater. Highlights also from Sheffield Wednesday against Millwall and how Southampton made progress last night. European Cup night in basketball. Kingston's hopes are fading, but victory over Barcelona tonight would be their greatest ever achievement. From Hinterglem in Austria, Marc Girardelli, the new world slalom champion, defends his title in the combined competition. And alongside the action, opinion as well. Four men call Taylor facing the problems of English soccer. This is the important opinion of Lord Justice Taylor. It does seem that behaviour has been much better uh, on the terraces and in the grounds generally uh, than it was before. I'm afraid that uh, behaviour on the pitch seems to have got worse, which is very regrettable and sets a very bad example. A year on from the Taylor Report, the Lord Justice alongside Rogan Taylor for the supporters, Gordon Taylor for the players and Graham Taylor for the team. 
But the FA Cup takes us first to the south coast. Brighton against a Liverpool side who tonight, we understand, have signed Coventry's David Speedy for a fee of around £700,000. He won't figure in this fourth round replay, though, where the commentator is Barry Davis. Both teams will feel that their lineups have been strengthened compared with Saturday. For Brighton, Robert Codner returns after suspension, and that means that Brian Wade drops down to substitute, and John Burns, scorer of the equaliser at Anfield, will now partner Mike Small up front. Liverpool welcome back Roddy Whelan, he's been out for nine games, and Steve McMahon, who missed the first match because of a one-game suspension, picked up for being sent off in the replay against Blackburn. Mulby moves down to substitute, and Rosenthal loses his place. Ronnie Whelan, his problem has been a hamstring injury, and he comes back to captain the side, determined not to let it happen again against Brighton. The smiling Brian Hill of Kettering is the man in charge, and Brighton attacking the goal to our right. Captain Wilkins was in possession, looking for lightning to strike for the third time. 83, 84, will it be 91 as well? A victory over Liverpool in the FA Cup. John Cumplin to take the first free kick of the contest. And a good knockdown, and Robola knew where it was, but didn't attempt to prevent the corner. Slice clearance, but obviously Gobble I couldn't get near to. He doesn't come this time either. Whelan had the jump well. No one will have to jump for that one. Certainly far more positive than they have been in one or two of their away matches this season. Carter won't make that. Jimmy Carter, yet to appear on the winning side since uh, being transferred from Millwall. Barnes. Barry Venison. Rush. I can't let him turn, but they did. Wonderfully smooth by Ian Rush. Didn't really get a weight of shot. McCarthy trying to prevent him turning, but failing to do so. This is John Byrne. Good tackle by Venison. Staunton for Barnes. Chivers with him. Barnes. Good block and a good try. Lively stuff at the Goldstone ground. Barnes a constant threat. Chivers did enormously well to block the first effort, but how quickly Barnes responded with the acrobatics, but wide. Carthy caught slightly in two minds, and it's Barnes again. Good save with the follow-up, and it's in by McMahon. Almost inevitable that Barnes would be involved. And Liverpool had the early goal. Steve McMahon, missing on Saturday, finishes it off after Digweed had pushed out a strong attempt by Barnes. McMahon winning the race, 10 minutes gone. Liverpool had the lead. Chase for Walker from Wilkins. Burn forward, and that's a free kick to Brighton. Chivers has come forward, and so has McCarthy, six and five respectively. If you if you can see these numbers on the Brighton shirts, and a nod down and followed, and somehow Gobbler keeps it out. 
and it was Byrne who put it wide. Extraordinary escape for Liverpool. Wilkins will take the corner. Small tries to get to it. There was a bit of pushing. Bruce double up. I don't know how much he got of that from the free kick. They really were nowhere, the defenders. It came first off his feet, then off his chest. And Barham, I think, may have been the last player to touch it. Davis must be delighted with the way his team started, but not too happy about that last incident. Podner. Whelan saw that very early, and his rush crumpling to him. Good start. And it's comfortably kept out in the end. But Perry did weed. Keeping it down to one. Good play by Roddy Whelan at the start of that. Codner was waiting for it. Whelan took it. Codner again. Field for handball. Not given. Good cover by Compton. Rush in full stride. Hit it well. And the goalkeeper needed a little help. But there was no attacker coming up. Barry Lloyd, second from the right as we look, the Brighton manager. McCarthy did well, helped out by Codner. Burn on the run, it's a good ball. Nickel in attendance. And did a good job, just held him up. Walker with another chance for the cross. Gives himself a better angle. And Codner is wide with the header. And he's cross with himself, and frankly he should be. Good play by Walker, who changed the angle, found the perfect cross. But certainly for Brighton, Cogler did not find the perfect header. Barham. Wilkins, useful to Cogner. to make a run from left of the penalty spot and didn't get the flick on denied them by nickel Carthy has remained forward this is burn small holding it up well walker offside surely no it's not no it's not small has scored Small, who started the way back now. Where did he run from? The line from was absolutely level. Liverpool certainly thought that Small was offside. But the linesman kept his flag down, and the goal stands. Barnes. his way away Walker opts for greater simplicity Barnes stood off him and they're letting him have room for the shot which is very very well held nasty one for Digweed with Rush ever a threat for any rebound. And that's enough for Mr. Hill. And it's certainly been full value for the crowd. 1-1 at half-time. McMahon scoring after 10 minutes when Liverpool were rampant. But Brighton coming back through Mike Small in the 37th minute as he beats the flag, as it were, to find the corner. Well, 
crash of the half-time discussion around on the terraces on this side of the Goldstone ground certainly centered on the uh, question of whether the goal was offside or not and it's no great surprise to find all the Liverpool supporters feeling that he was but really Jeff Pearson had the best view in the ground here's Barnes Brighton will be hoping he doesn't start the second half as he started the first he was pushed a bit then really was wonderful at the start he orchestrated every theme and McMahon found one right note to Arrows Whelan Barnes and McCarthy has gone across to him oh it's a poor back pass and Nickel is a whisker away and Crumplin almost ruined Brighton's night he'd come away with it and he just put it straight to Nickel who was a whisker away from the far post Benison. Liverpool attack right across the width of the field. And Barnes getting in between two. Staunton on the left. Whedon's gone to the middle. This is Barnes. And this is McMahon. Ooh, really cracking shot. Wonderful strike by Steve McMahon, which Perry Digweed got a hand to the turnover. May have gone over anyway. Carter with the in-swinger. Barnes got the nod back. And Ronnie Whelan. Really was a fine opportunity. Had room, got underneath it. That's a fine ball by Wilkins to Walker. Small coming in. And Walker really didn't strike that across the box. If it was going to gain him anything, it had surely to be hit rather harder than that. And Ron Barnes finds himself as a defender. Chivers has come forward. Robelar comes for it, doesn't try to get it, and a wonderful back flip. But the linesman's flag was up. It's still 1-1. One, one. Robelar came for it, didn't quite get there. And the goal is disallowed by the referee. Don't think the flag was up. Certainly there were two players on the line. I can only think there was an initial foul on Bruce Grobbler. That's the only reason I can find as to why that one was disallowed. But the, the whistle had certainly gone before the ball reached the head of Small. And Carter turning Walker. Pumpkin's head, which made contact. McMahon, fine turn, still McMahon, Whelan, fine save, struck with the outside of the boot, and curling, I suspect to be just inside the post. Nice back flick. Ronnie Whelan again. Not so good as his previous attempt. Fading away. Yes, I think it would have crept in. Not the second one not troubling the goalkeeper. Small up there, and Byrne 
unable to quicken the stride. Benison. Chiffers staying with Barnes. But unable to dispossess him. And McMahon goes for the run. Rush goes the other way. Staunton with the shot. And it's off the post. An amazing escape. McMahon who started it. He collided with the post. Whether he knocked the ball onto the post, we may be able to see from this. It was a wonderful change of direction by Rush that set up Staunton. And it looked as though it was going to go in. And maybe McMahon confused things. One-one it stays. Chivers. Coupling. Chivers has gone for the return. Didn't get it, but his presence helped maintain the attack. And that was deflected for the corner. McCarthy has come up. And McCarthy couldn't reach it. Walker. More really up than in. Wilkins, that's a better cross on by McCarthy. Barham. Good twist and turn. All the bodies there. Walker! Couldn't keep it down. Just I suspect. Beautiful taken on the knee, and he was held and pushed by Ablett. And although it appears that one or two players are pleading the case of Gary Ablett, the referee is thinking about the yellow card, and I think he's going to produce it. Yes, indeed. Pity in a way that the yellow card has had to come because the game has been played in a fine spirit. But the referee was right. Oh, goodness me. Well, Ray Wilkins surely applaud that most of all. It was a wonderful free kick by his brother and a very good stop by Grobola. And one apiece, so into the first period of extra time. That they might find Walker. Good play. And it's lost and eventually rescued by Burrows. His header in the first place caused the problem. Corner tally reaches 13. And lucky for some. Rabala has lost. He's got back now. Some of the scrambles in the Liverpool six-yard area have been quite unreal for a side of their pedigree. And Rabala just gets a bit of it this time. <laughs> and uh, don't think that was a fraternal greeting. Is quite unconcerned. And if Grobola said it was my ball, he's given it back to Barrows. Rush, Staunton. Jan Mulvey is forward here. And that's a curler! But not quite enough. Put it well as he came inside his man. Something. 
Nickel. Have to watch the bounce. True back pass from Ablett. in a radio interview I heard this morning about suggestions that Liverpool are not quite what they were. Mulby, McMahon. He will go to the last ounce of Tret. And it's Benison shots and it's a very good stop. Really difficult one for the goalkeeper. Bounce with such a test in front of him, and he turned it away well to maintain his record. The eighth match against Liverpool, yet to be on the losing side. Rush! of the six-yard area. A quick turn after Venison had won the ball, but it was just too tight. And Rush almost made it his. So did Barnes almost. But Liverpool will need more than the almost. This is a great play by Codner. Gets it back from Small. This is Mark Barham. Good approach. What about the finish? McMahon. Mulvey. Burrows. Beardsley. Rush. Yes! Marvellous goal by Ian Rush. And a wonderful early ball by the substitute, Peter Beardsley. It's his third goal of the tie, but the instant pass, one touch, and up onto the top of the stanchion. No change in the expression. Looking for Byrne. This is Walker. That's a good shot, and his well saved. Needed to be held with a small waiting by the far post. Burrows. Basically occupying the right side. That's a good ball. 
And it's a good stop. Goal kick is given. But even so, it's a good stop. And I think, in fact, the linesman indicating he was offside. Brighton often looking now for the long ball. Liverpool dictating the match at the finish. But can they find the finish? They can! John McMahon. Scorer of the first goal. And in all probability, scorer of the last goal. And the 1,500 or so have come down from Liverpool on their feet in delight with arms in the air and smiles as broad as the Mersey. Good play, good finish. And it's been threatened throughout the second half of extra time. And how much does Mr Hill have to allow for stoppages? And if Kenny Dalglish's team is going to go to Wembley, they're certainly taking a difficult route. He goes first to greet the opposition and then to greet his players at the end of a rattling good cup tie. Ian Rush started it all off at Anfield, scored one here, but in the end, the decision came from Steve McMahon, scoring the first and the last. Liverpool go on yet again to play Everton, but great credit is deserved by Brighton of the second division, who made it doubly hard and a more than a little unfortunate. 3 2 to Liverpool, the final outcome. I shouldn't, who am I to pick Liverpool teams? But when Mowbray was on the bench, I felt reasonably happy, if you could ever be happy. The change was when he came on the pitch. And they shortened their game up a wee bit. And uh, that was the difference. What a marvellous game. For everybody, yes. Says he with a big smile. <laughs> <laughs> Brave face of Barry Lloyd. Uh, Terry Venable certainly enjoyed watching a great time with us. That's great. Uh, how much did you enjoy watching Liverpool go through there? Um, well, they certainly had him on the rack there for a long time. And all credit to Brighton. They, they, they give it... a every shot they had there and uh, there was some incredible scrambles on both sides I yeah. thought it was a terrific cup tie. Intriguing talking points as well the yeah. first talking point is perhaps that first Brighton goal and all the question marks of offside over Mike Small what's your view? Well I think the ball is, is knocked out before that in close he hits it early but Small's left in there they've come out and left him and to me he is well offside there's no doubt in my opinion at all I have no doubts at all about that that really shouldn't have been argued about. Two or three yards, in your view? I thought it was two or three yards offside, not a doubt at all. Such a frustrating decision to watch from the bench, but, uh, but in the second half, uh, a decision that went against Brighton, and equally hard to see what was wrong here. Well, the same thing. Although they've had that go for them, I think, I think that's a perfectly good uh, goal. I, 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 it, there can't be a uh, foul on the goalkeeper, because the goalkeeper comes from behind the players, so I then think it must be offside, but as we can there see that there's two players on the, on the goal line. So I, I really... Um, right. Quite uh, confused. But here's the one that counted from uh, John Byrne. Well, a typical rush type goal. He's nipped in there and he slid it in before that uh, they can get themselves organised. No. And an early ball, the three players around rush, you think it's enough, but it's not. And uh, that's what makes him so exceptional to finish like that. And that is a very, very typical rush goal. And the exactly. kind of goal that suggests that maybe Liverpool aren't struggling for form in the manner <laughs> in which we think. I think that. Uh, well, uh, that, that, that's being said at the moment, and that often happens because they've only got to have the slightest uh, lilt in their game and people jump on it because they're not used to seeing them um, do anything but win games. Does irritate so, them when you say that, though, doesn't it? But that's, <laughs> they've got very angry, you shouldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> they've come Reminder back the of the news that we've heard that we understand that Coventry's David Speedy has mm. signed uh, uh, for Liverpool for a fee of around £700,000. Mm. What influence do you think Speedy might have there? I think it's, um, he's, he's an exceptional player. Um, that was a surprise uh, to everyone, I think, because uh, he said, Speedy, change your mind this afternoon because he was supposed to be going to Aston Villa. Really? And, um, and to go there, you're never really surprised. They're always collecting 
top players and uh, they've, they've done it again. Strengthens the old squad, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, that's right. Right, next for us it's uh, Elland Road. The live match of the day on Sunday couldn't separate them and it still looks very evenly matched. Leeds United against Arsenal and we'll join John Motson. Andy Linegan back in the Arsenal team tonight in place of the injured David O'Leary is on familiar ground. He was a Leeds United player before moving on to Oldham, Norwich and then Arsenal. In fact, both teams are forced into changes tonight. Leeds are without Carl Schutt, injured in the first match on Sunday. So at number eight, John Pearson starts the game this time. And number four, David Batty plays his last game before starting a two-match suspension. Well, there's a second change in the Arsenal lineup at number seven, Perry Groves was also injured in Sunday's match, so in comes 21-year-old David Hillier to start the game. He can play either in defence or midfield. Leeds United, 11 consecutive home wins. Arsenal beaten just once in some 30 competitive matches. Something has to give. This is Winterburn for Arsenal. Limpart. Strachan for Leeds. Batty. Play on. Strachan. That is a foul. Lee Chapman brought crashing down by Steve Bold. There's Chapman. Only just over. And David Seaman probably should have had it covered but it was a good header by Lee Chapman this got up really well yes he had it covered here's White Haddock's outside him Smith has got to sort himself out here well, he did it ever so well because there were three Leeds players surrounding him. Winterburn. Fairclough. McAllister. Well played. Batty. Pearson. McAllister. What a good move by Leeds. It's David Batty right through. Goal scoring's not his strongest suit. And Seaman was able to make the save. I think Batty's only scored once for Leeds in his... Uh, 100 or so games and he got put clean through the middle there in a dangerous position but the ball bounced even before it reached Seaman corner it was a chance though especially in a tight match and that's Fairclough oh and a missed kick Fairclough again speed now for Leeds Pearson's closing in with the goalkeeper and David Seaman is taking no chances. Leeds forcing the pace right from the start here.